Today, you're going to learn how to demonstrate that the law of conservation of mass is being satisfied by balancing chemical equations. So first off, why do we even bother to balance an equation? It just seems like a whole lot of work. Why do we do it? So you know that the law of conservation of mass says that matter can't be created or destroyed. So we need to show that that's actually happening in an equation. So the number of atoms of each element of your reactants, that's the stuff that you start with on the left of your equation, must be exactly equal to the number of atoms of each of the elements of your products. That's the stuff that's produced by the reaction. It's on the right hand side of your equation. So matter can't be created or destroyed. Whatever you start with, you must also end with. And that's what we're trying to show by balancing an equation. So here's your first example. So we have aluminum reacting with copper to sulfate to produce aluminum sulfate and some copper. I took away the solid liquid gas aqueous just to make this look as clean as possible. When you get good at this, that should go back in. So to begin with, we're going to clearly separate the reactants from the products by drawing a straight line beneath the yields arrow. On the reactant side, we're going to make a list of all of the elements we're going to start with, just the, for the symbols. So we're going to start with some aluminum, some copper, and SNO. Sulfur and oxygen are part of a polyatomic ion, however they are two separate elements, so write them separately. On the right hand side, I'm going to make the exact same list in the same order. That's going to help us keep from getting confused. So again, we have aluminum, copper, sulfur, and oxygen. And I'm going to make them these two lists uh, even so I can look straight across and compare the two. The next step is to go back through and write down how many atoms of each element I have. So for example, I just have one atom of aluminum on the reactant side. I have one atom of copper, one atom of sulfur, and I have four atoms of oxygen. This number four goes just with this oxygen. On the right hand side, I have two atoms of aluminum. This gets a little tricky. This three goes with the sulfur and it goes with the oxygen. So I have three atoms of sulfur. I'm going to make sure I write it in the right place. And then this four goes just with the oxygen. Since there is a four and a three with the oxygen, we're going to multiply across the parentheses. So there are 12 atoms of oxygen. And finally, there's just one atom of copper over here. So you can see immediately that the law of conservation of mass is not upheld here. We go from one atom of aluminum to two, we go from one atom of sulfur to three, and from four atoms of oxygen to 12. This can't happen. It looks like we're creating atoms magically when this equation hap when this reaction happens. That can't happen. It's impossible. So we're going to place some coefficients in the blanks before the formulas to show how many of how many uh, molecules of each of those are reacting. An easy place to start looks like it's going to be, oh let's start with sulfur. It's pretty easy to go from 1 to 3. In order to go from 1 to 3, I'm going to put a 3 up in this blank because that means now we will have 3 atoms of sulfur. Here's the catch. It's not just the sulfur that's being affected. The copper is also being affected. There are now three. And now there are three times four atoms of oxygen, or 12 atoms of oxygen. Hey, look, that fixed oxygen too. That's great. It did mess up copper, though. Now we have three atoms of copper on the left and only one on the right. I can fix that by putting a three in this blank. The only thing it affects is copper and really easy to fix the aluminum, I need two on the left. So I'm going to put a two in the blank, and that fixes aluminum there. Notice that I put a coefficient in the blank, and then I fixed everything on this list that it, was, that it affected. Then I put a coefficient in a blank, and I fixed the list. Now our list on the left is the same as the list on the right, which means that there are the same number of atoms of each element on the reactant side as the product side. One more example, this is aluminum reacting with oxygen gas to produce aluminum oxide. I'm going to make a list. There are only two elements at work here. I have one atom of aluminum and two atoms of oxygen reacting. 
two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen produced. So this one's a little tricky because, well, aluminum is pretty easy to fix. You'd think that you just put a two in this blank, but we're gonna start someplace else. Here we have two atoms of oxygen versus three. There's no common denominator that I can use. I can't multiply two by two or by three. So I'm gonna to need to adjust both of these. And the smallest number they both go into is six. So I'm gonna cause six atoms of oxygen to react on the left and produce six on the right, two times three. That affects aluminum, it turns it into four atoms of aluminum, which means that I need a four in that blank. So try this one on your own. Hit pause, come back when you're done, and we'll check the answers. All right, we're gonna start the same way every time. Drawing this line, we've got magnesium and oxygen, magnesium and oxygen, one atom and two, and just one and one. So the easiest thing here to fix is to double the number of atoms of oxygen, turns it into two, but it also affects the magnesium, turns that guy into two. Then the only other thing to fix is magnesium on the left. Now there are two, that satisfies the law of conservation of mass. One more, much more complicated one for you to try on your own. Try this, hit pause, come back when you're done. Start by drawing this line down here and making a list, nitrogen, Hydrogen, nitrogen appears again, I don't list it twice. Oxygen, sodium, and phosphorus. Same list on the other side. And here we go, we're gonna count atoms. One, two atoms of nitrogen. I hope you're careful, it's in two places. We have four atoms of hydrogen. Oxygen appears here, and here, so we're gonna add them up. Three here plus four there gives you seven. Three atoms of sodium and one atom of phosphorus. On the right-hand side, we have nitrogen in two places again. This three goes with this nitrogen, so there are three there, and there's one more on the right-hand side, so that makes four. Hydrogen, we have four times three, which is 12. Oxygen, we have four here and another three over here, which makes seven. Sodium, we just have one. And phosphorus, we have one. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, what is the easiest thing to fix first? I'm not going to try to mess with, with hydrogen. It looks like sodium is pretty easy to fix. I want the right-hand side to become three. So I'm just gonna stick a three in this blank. Now we have three sodiums. Let's count this carefully. Three nitrogens here plus another three gives us six. And then for oxygen, we have nine plus four more for 13. Hmm, that messed up uh, oxygen, that's too bad. Um, let's try and fix hydrogen next. It's only in one place on each side. I wanna go from four to 12, so I'll put a three in this blank, and that does change that to 12, but it also affects the nitrogens. I had two before, but now it's two times this three that we wrote down, so that's six, so that fixed it. Oxygen now is three times three, which is nine, plus another four, which is 13. Oh, it fixed our oxygen too. Does this look done? Yep, we have the same number of atoms of each element on the left as we do on the right-hand side. So at this point, you have just demonstrated the law of conservation of mass by balancing chemical equations.